Okay, in this video, we're going to look at something called the mean square error, or MSE. Mean square error is a measure of how closely your forecast follows your original data. And the purpose of it is to help compare forecasting methods. So if we were to do, say, several forecasts, the one with the smallest MSE would be said to most closely track the data. So let's look at the, uh, the example I've created over here. We uh, have 12 months worth of data, and our data is in the sales column. That's actual real-world data, let's say. In column C, we have a forecast, which notice begins in the fourth month. Now, I don't want you to think about how I may have done this forecast. In fact, I just did it kind of randomly. I have other videos that show forecasting methods. So in this one, let's just assume someone has done this forecast listed in column C. Well, what's mean square error all about? Well, mean is an average. We know what squaring is all about, raising things to the second power. So what do we mean by this error here? Well, the error is simply the difference between an original data value, such as look here in uh, month four. The original data value would be the 665, and our forecast is 802. They're obviously different, so there's an error there. And the error would just be calculated by subtracting those. So I could take the 665 and just put a subtraction sign in and subtract the 802. Uh, so that error is negative 137. Here I'll go and label what I just did. That's an error. Now, depending on which uh, number is smaller or larger between the, the data, the sales, and the forecast, you might get a positive or a negative error. Let's copy this down and just see what we get. Okay, some are negative, as you can see, and some are positive. Uh, to make it's it's considered a good idea to make them all positive because uh, that way uh, if we do an average where we have to add things up, we don't want the the negative values to sort of cancel out the positive values because whether they're negative or positive, you still have an error there. You still still have a miss, you might say. So what statisticians like to do generally is square um, the errors. So that'll be easy enough to do in Excel. We'll just here for the error squared, we'll grab that negative 137 cell and we'll just do uh, shift six to bring up the raise power exponent um, symbol, I should say. So D fifth raised to the second. So that turns out to be um, 18769. Six, one and then that's just copy those down. Okay, I like to point out very quickly here that there was no sense calculating an error up here where we didn't have a forecast. We only calculate the error for these months where we actually have a forecast. Okay, so we have the error, error squared and mean um, square error would essentially just be the mean of these values in column E. I mean as an average. Well, you know, we could do it uh, by, to get an average, we could do it by adding all these up and then dividing by the number that uh, of rows we have. But, you know, if you followed my other videos, you know something about Excel, then you know that in fact an average is uh, just an easy thing to do using the average function. So for mean square error, let's just grab our average function and then let's just grab these uh, squares of the errors here. Hit enter, and that will be the calculation of the mean square error. I'm going to show you another way of doing it you might like because it's actually quicker, but, but your first just very quickly. You might wonder, what should this MSE value tell us? And the answer, being completely honest with you, is all by itself it tells us almost nothing. When it's useful is if we have 
perhaps two or three different forecasts and we're wondering which of those more closely follows the data, then it would be easy. We could calculate the MSE for each forecast and then simply the one with the smallest MSE would be the one that tracks the data most closely. So it can be helped to pick out the best one, um, best forecast in that sense. But I said that I'd show you a quicker way of doing MSC, so I'm going to finish off this video doing that. It makes use of a neat little sum function in Excel. So start typing the word first equal and then sum. But look at all these different functions that uh, start with the word sum. I want you to go down to the last one you see, sum x m y squared. What that stands for is sum of the x minus y's squared. So what we can do is apply this function to the original data. So I'll grab this and the forecasted values. Okay, now that what this function does is it actually calcul calculates the error and then it squares the errors and then the word sum has it, has it go and add up all of these. Now if we were to hit enter right now, we won't get the correct answer because that added everything up, but keep in mind to do an average, you then have to divide by the number of original data items you have. So, you know, if I count here, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I really want to divide this by 9, but I'll show you a neat way of where you don't have to count it. It would be, you know, could be a pain if it's, if that uh, data goes on for several pages. So instead, we can just use in Excel the count function. And if we just say, okay, divide by the count and then grab the data points, it knows that the count of that column I selected is equal to 9. So if I hit enter now, notice I get the same MSC. You know, so personally, I don't care which method my students use. Um, the second one's a, perhaps a little bit quicker, especially, like I said, if you've done like three or four forecasts and you quickly want to get the MSE of each of those, I recommend the shortcut. Okay, uh, that's it here. Um, hope that's helpful. I'm going to sign out.